Nothing quite so alarming for BBC Two in half an hour. Snooker action from Sheffield. First, slicing through the headlines to get at the juicy bits. It's BBC Two's news crew. Good evening and welcome to the show and if you enjoy seeing politicians hilariously abused and humiliated then do keep watching because in half an hour Jeremy Paxman's on Newsnight. <laughs> in the news this week, as military manoeuvres escalate in the Middle East, the Ministry of Defence unveils Britain's latest ballistic deterrent. <laughs> uh, the President of Bangladesh's state visit to Britain is somewhat mild when uh, Michael Howard steps in to arrange his transport back to Heathrow. <laughs> And the Metropolitan Police video surveillance team admits that the six-month training course may not be long enough. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team tonight is one of the stars of Father Ted, who has shocked viewers in Ireland by portraying an Irish priest as a sober, God-fearing person who has no sex life, <laughs> Dermot Morgan. <laughs> Also joining us this week is a woman who said recently that she was fed up with all the middle-class, middle-aged men in suits on television, so <laughs> it's just as well that we put her on Eddie Izzard's side, <laughs> Janet Street Porter. Uh, so bucking no trends whatsoever, we begin with round one, four suspect packages of unidentified news clips, Ian and Dermot. Um, uh, Brian Mulwiney and some Tories relaunching the Tory party again. That's a nice ballerina. Mm. I don't know what she's doing near the Tories. Oh, it's a Pratt in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> the Conservative Party decided there aren't enough right-wing tabloids. So uh, they're launching one of their own, which is this new paper called Look. And um, it's got thrilling, upbeat stories about how well everybody's doing um, in the country. And so there's the woman, Darcy Butler, who's the ballerina. They said, isn't she wonderful? on at the ballet and then she said yeah but if you'd given me a grant to study instead of refusing mm. I would have been more wonderful <laughs> and then Scunthorpe were meant to be this brilliant side who built a new stadium and they said well you refused us a grant to build the stadium so it turned out that the whole paper is entirely full of lies uh, rather like all the other tabloids yeah? <laughs> <laughs> what was the bit with um, the, the, someone's red head being scraped with a thing Mm. <laughs> you know, okay, that was, that was bit... Janet in makeup. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. So you managed to get a copy of this, did you? Yeah. Because um, we did try to get uh, a copy of, uh, of Look, as it's called. Um, <laughs> but uh, we sent a bike over, and by the time the bike got there, they refused us a copy. They said they weren't going to give us one anymore. You dangerous subversive, right. you, I guess. Right. <laughs> so we got one from the Labour office instead. <laughs> <laughs> So what was the red thing with it? Oh. <laughs> what was it? He's warming up. He'll get there in a minute. What was this it, bloody thing? <laughs> that was Michael Heseltine's head before he put the blonde wig on, before he put the hat on. I can, do, I can do the bullshit answer, but... <laughs> I'm just Is curious. It? It's a question, surely. It's a piece of apparatus <laughs> used in the milliner's business. Oh, hat block. That's hat, violent to you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Looked like a red Martian being smooth round for, for presenting to the Queen or something. We must smooth you, Red Martian. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It looked like yes, that. It looked very much like that. And I've and seen that in an episode of I'm Bonkers. <laughs> uh, Eddie and Janet. Right. It's uh, that woman again. Ooh. And there she is in Princess a pink Di. suit. Had demonstrating new washing up liquid. <laughs> Lots of scissors in there. They've left a few in. And uh, what about her makeup and all of that? Yeah, she had earrings on and, and... Yeah, and Julia, Julia Carling was rather spiteful, yes, about... No, what did she say? 
Well, actually, I tried to watch Julia Carlin the other morning on that big breakfast. She's brain dead, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> she looks like Twizzle, I think. It's, it's, yeah. it's shocking, isn't it, to, to think of somebody brain dead like Julia living with a, a massive intellectual like uh, Will. <laughs> 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 the only thing massive about him is his size. He's well, got no the biggest size Will went of any off bloke to find ever someone ever. really clever like Diana. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit uh, ghoulish, though, isn't it? You wonder what Diana's going to do next, sort of road accidents. Let me through, I'm the Princess of Wales. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't she style herself now the Queen of Hearts? So I'd say there'll be, you know, the next operation, Queen of Kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or if it's a vasectomy, I suppose she'll be Queen of Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it all take, do you remember? 43 years. <laughs> But why, did, why was it filmed? I, I you know, <sighs> it, it was on Sky. Because <laughs> it was an in-depth documentary. It's sort of keepsake, you know, a memento, so she could watch it in the evenings. It. That's <laughs> me at the heart of it. It's the surgeon there beside me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great day. <laughs> Sky officials were worried uh, whether it was right to film uh, such a dangerous medical case, uh, but they went ahead and filmed her anyway. <laughs> uh, Diana's uh, experience of public appearances stood her in good stead. Uh, she made a primary incision with a large pair of scissors and said, I now declare this patient open. <laughs> uh, Ian and Dermot, uh, who's taking the strain here? All right, I, I think this is a very complicated <laughs> story. Um, it's, it's about the Euro tunnel. It's been money, losing money. <laughs> money hand over fist. That's it. What was that? Mm. What? That you, <laughs> bit. <laughs> Sometimes I hear strange voices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know how large their overdraft is, in fact? Yes, it's 53 years. <laughs> <laughs> Billions. Um, it's 900 million. It's, no, it's 9 billion. It, it's 8. It's 8 billion, actually. But 8 it, billion. And do you know... <laughs> Do you know how long it's going to take to pay back? 53 years. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually 57 years, you know? Yeah, well, well, I knew... Yeah, okay, that's, that's how long their concession picky, is to pay picky, back. Picky. Well, the big joke about the Euro Tunnel, because I went on, it, uh, went on the train to Paris last Friday, is that you crawl through the English countryside and then you get to Ashford International Terminal. <laughs> is that a contradiction in terms or what? I would say the terminus here is better than the terminus in... Um, in Gare du Nord. But the one here, it's really quite groovy. Yeah, but it's going to be replaced. By an elephant. It's going to go to, um, <laughs> no, 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 it's going to um, St Pancras. We're really? up against a pair of train spots. Oh, sorry, we are. It's an unexpected... Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to when the Terminus is replaced by an elephant, personally. <laughs> Uh, when Chairman Sir Alistair Morton informed a meeting of shareholders that Eurotunnel is currently losing money at a rate of £29 a second, uh, there was a stunned silence, uh, during which they lost another £230. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, Eddie and Janet. Oh, um, mm. the Shane Rich experience. Oh, and here's Big Parliament, band, where Parliament. the divorce bill was... Um, yeah, man the knock back. They're not divorced, they? No, they're not. Oh, and things. Tammy Wynette, D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Divorce amendment. Mm. Divorce amendment. So yes. you've got to wait 18 yeah, months 18 now. months. Good. And why did we see the bottom lid? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> did they vote on the separate sides of the house in the vote? I can't remember. Which voted for which, then? She was for and he was against. Or the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get the feeling that Eddie's uh, on-screen shameless lobbying for easier <laughs> questions last week have finally borne fruit. You know, <laughs> Tammy Wynette, D-I-V-O, oh, wow, I wonder what this question's about. But yours, <laughs> oh, sorry, we could have answered yours. We knew the answer to yours. Yeah, we just... knew far more about trains than you did. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had some of your points. I'm sorry, we didn't even get a bonus point for knowing more about trains than you did. Sorry, you just... knew more about trains than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little known fact about me. Mm. Listen, bit of a nerd, deep Jealousy's going to get you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. The government's shop defeat uh, over Lord Mackay's divorce uh, reforms. The government did succeed in introducing a no-fault bill so that uh, when things go wrong, no one's to blame. An idea first tried out after the Scott report. <laughs> 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 which, uh, which sweet sorrow uh, brings us sobbing to the end of this uh, initial conflict and the situation is uh, that, well, at this early stage nothing can separate our two couples, both happily sharing four points.
Well, uh, in answer to the thousands of letters clamouring for it, round two this week features discarded footage of old regional news stories, a couple of obscure local news items that hopefully both teams missed. Eddie and Janet, uh, who, where and why? These are my people. They're ramblers. I'm president of the Ramblers Association, but I don't know this well, one. They're right. obviously exercising a right of way. Have you always, uh, have you always rambled then? I have, but spookily <laughs> enough, I have. Is there any idea which programme it was from? Rambling know. Today. No. <laughs> it's on no, the word. It, uh... You're not going to get it. <laughs> it's got Look West. How would we answer that, that if we live in London and we don't get <laughs> Look West? You well, have to anyway, at the moment. You just scour the annals of telly <laughs> running around the country going, have you seen any, anything on your telly that might be used in the programme? Yeah. You'd have to be sick to know that. <laughs> You'd have to have time on your hands. Well, we thought you might know about it because you were president of the Ramblers Association. No point in just trying to humiliate me because I haven't seen Look West. <laughs> <laughs> But you That's can see it. it probably on those run-ups. You know, they're sort of four in the morning and someone rounds up bits of Local clippings, news. you know? And if you go to, like, up to Carlisle and you see Bulger Television and they have their local... Well, every regional television station in Britain has these local news programmes, mm. don't they? About 6 or 6.30. And, and the one in Carlisle is just riveting. That would be uh, Look North, North West. Well, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah, Look. Yeah. Look around a load of sheep, not doing much. It's drizzling again. It's the school dinner crisis in, in Cockermouth. What? Sorry. <laughs> So, Janet was rambling. Oh, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> it, is, it is the story, or was, 15 minutes ago, uh, the story <laughs> that uh, gripped viewers of Look West last year uh, when militant last ramblers... Last year? Last year? You just last said it was year. last week. Last no, no, year? No, we no, had to watch that for a year to get that... <laughs> Happened in the last seven days. No, no. Yeah, I thought. No, topical. this is archive footage of archive. regional news stories. Are you by any chance run by strange Martians with red heads? <laughs> <laughs> towards the Queen. Oddly yeah. enough, no. It is the story that uh, gripped uh, the nation last year uh, <laughs> when militant ramblers uh, asserted their right to use an ancient footpath in Westbury, Wiltshire, uh, even though a house was built on top of it without official planning permission. Uh, the couple who bought the house are now legally obliged to let anyone who wants to uh, come straight through the front door. Uh, they say they don't mind the old rambler wandering in, but it's hard to concentrate on the telly when the fox hunt comes <laughs> through. <laughs> uh, Ian and Dermot, a more local scandal for you. What nightmare have these people shared? We heard a wish and whistling sound, and then a thud. Well, as, as there was pieces on the floor and I was standing there in my bare feet, the, the smaller pieces started to defrost, and the smell that was coming from it wasn't particularly <laughs> nice. It's, uh, it's Kensington Palace, isn't it? That's uh, one of the pieces from the operation that Di likes to bring home. <laughs> 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 this, this has got to be um, an aeroplane story, hasn't it? One of those things where... They've ejected the frozen um, excrement <laughs> at a mile high and it's gone through the atmosphere and gone whack into someone's home and then started to defrost. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, was it, a, a whoop and a whistle? <laughs> it's quite good hearing from a mile up. Uh, <laughs> and there it is in your front room, sort of takeaway turd. <laughs> No, there is a term for it, actually. It's called blue ice. Do you know anyone that, that shits blue turd? <laughs> <laughs> Royalty. <laughs> so, Michael Caine was in a, a movie called Blue yeah, Ice. Blue that was, that mm. was shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, it's, um, it's actually on BBC One in about 15 minutes. <laughs> anyway, if anyone's complaining about the language, that four-letter word we're allowed to use now because the Prime Minister used it. Oh, it's on the Last front page week. of the yeah, Sunday Express. To describe our European partners. Oh, right. shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's five letters. That sounded like a <laughs> sheep. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, any idea which uh, regional news programme that came from? Oh. Over the last ten years. <laughs> mm. Bear in mind Lee. it was in Essex. Um, Good morning, Thaxted. <laughs> Switch um, on Ipswich. Yeah. <laughs> Get up Colchester. <laughs> uh, it's I'm Look East. In fact. <laughs> Sorry about Look that. East is the uh, inspiration. Look, 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 yeah. look up would be far Who more. Who comes up with these program titles? Why is it be looking? Because it could be in East looking West if you're right on the coast. <laughs> Train spotting skills are back. <laughs> <laughs> it is Look East uh, that he was look on. Now. 
Um, look West, it was in Wiltshire, and look you, presumably in Wales. Um, <laughs> uh, in 1995, blue ice fell on Mr. and Mrs. Palmer's house in Essex. The foul-smelling waste matter smashed through the roof and ended up in a bedroom used by their student son, where it remained unnoticed for two terms. <laughs> Uh, a spokesman for the Civil Aviation Authority said out of three and a half million flights, uh, this only happens about 12 times a year, which will come as a great comfort, I'm sure, to the first person to be crushed to death by a half-ton <laughs> lump of frozen shit. <laughs> which uh, scatological fallout brings us skidding to the end of this uh, regional roundup, and the resultant mess is that, uh, well, neither side seem to have it in them, quite frankly, to assume <laughs> responsibility for a lead, both clinging to five. I just ask, um, it happens 12 times a year, poo goes into sky, but, but why? Did, did they what, say whatever that? happened to the definite article, I wonder? Uh, How can 12 times poo escape from... <laughs> where? Does it escape? Is there a hole where poo goes, oh, we must tunnel, poo... <laughs> No sense. The other thing was look east, mm. shouldn't be look east, it should be stand east and look every direction. <laughs> uh, the answer to your question is it seeps out, by seeps. the way. Seeps? Yes. How? It seeps. I don't know how. Don't Do you mean if there's a plane load of people who go a lot? <laughs> how can it seep? We can't have seepage. I mean... <laughs> That's the answer. Well, but you got that through your earphone? No, I don't have an earphone. <laughs> You don't have one. I'm not David Coleman, I don't... <laughs> seepage is not acceptable because it implies crack and crack implies escape of air right. and pe see people sucked out as well. OK. <laughs> You're on the loose. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a word. I'll see to it. <laughs> seepage is no good. OK. Uh, mathematicians amongst you will have worked out that this is our third round. Uh, <laughs> the one and thankfully only odd one out following his uh, protestations about being given impossible questions last week uh, Eddie's simple uh, foursome is William Shakespeare uh, the Queen a uh, mayfly and King Lot Kapu Iwa Kaimayamea the fifth of Hawaii <laughs> Shakespeare like trains <laughs> the Queen's really good at badminton the mayfly was the ship First got to America with the uh, founding fathers. <laughs> and Queen, King Lot Tutankhamun uh, was in charge of the guy who was in charge of Dano in Hawaii 5 0. <laughs> it's birthdays. Mm. Mm. In what way? Ah. <laughs> Thanks for that tip. Um, <laughs> Shakespeare birthday. Sort of, mm -hmm. he, he had one, yeah. yeah. It's his anniversary. Mm -hmm. The Queen uh, birthday, 70th. She has one. Big yes. one coming up. Last the summer. Mayfly birthday, mm -hmm. big party, friends round. <laughs> Of the coming, coming to Britain. Uh -huh. And King Tutankhamun, he, he got this guy and said, hey, Book you, him, Dano. Book him. <laughs> but he was one of the guys in the boat, wasn't he? The ones going... <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's holding. He's holding with a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, They're all Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Except the Mayfly, who's an insect and cannot legally join the Nazi party. Um, Look what I found under my desk. Anyway. Um, <laughs> is it birthdays last week? Queen's birthday last week, Shakespeare's birthday. Mm. We said all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Well, it's new material. Well, the Mayfly Can has we a birthday ever go and just day. repeat what you said? <laughs> Mayfly has a lifespan of a day. Every day is its birthday. Mm -hmm. Why? And it well, dies. Clever. Right. 24 hour lifespan. Mm. Wasn't it called the Mayflower, the boat? <laughs> I know, but I was doing comedy. <laughs> uh, the answer is that all of them have died on their birthday. Uh, with the happy exception of Her Majesty the Queen, uh, although as she has two birthdays a year, she is in twice as much danger. <laughs> <laughs> Janet. Yes, Angus. Janet, your uh, your media darlings are uh, Jarvis Cocker, mm -hmm. Jerry Adams, Martin Bell, and Spencer Percival. Spencer Percival. Yeah, he's uh, he was a prime minister beginning of the 19th century. Top of the news quiz. Um, uh, <laughs> Where do I get these questions? 
I... I don't like this game. This is... <laughs> this is so difficult. This is absolutely amazing. Well, he is famous for, uh, for one thing. Ah, he was famous for grinning slightly. <laughs> Do you know who Spencer Percival is? Or? Yes, Have he was shot. He was the only Prime Minister of England in our history who was shot. The the war. Cocker wasn't Lebanon. shot. All the others were shot. Jerry Adams was shot, wasn't he? Yeah, Jarvis yep. was half shot on the night in question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to give one to Ian, because he's sort of in the right area. The answer is uh, that they all wear bulletproof vests, uh, with the exce exception of uh, Spencer Percival, who should have. <laughs> Uh, Jarvis Cocker uh, has brought uh, a bulletproof vest uh, for his tour of America because he's frightened of being shot by Michael Jackson fans. Although, if this does happen, Michael Jackson has kindly offered to bring him back from the dead. <laughs> uh, Dermot, your uh, wacky bunch of funsters are Luciano Pavarotti, uh, Pope John Paul II, oh, uh, David Icke, <laughs> and George Carey. Right, right. Um, well, could this be about it's, it's women partners? Is it something like that? Because Luciano has a, has a new woman in his life, as we all know, and uh, Pope has been seeing Mother Teresa on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> That'll go down well at home, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> in actual fact, I think it's it's a it's a footballing type of story because David Icke was a was with Coventry as a goalkeeper for a while, and I think Luciano was, uh, did a bit of goalkeeping in his time. And I think the Pope did, did a bit of the old uh, custodian between the sticks himself. And uh, <laughs> so that's three goalkeepers. The odd man out is George Carey, who's right back with the QPR this season. <laughs> <laughs> Which, astonishingly, is the right answer. <laughs> uh, with one small detail which was wrong, which is actually that George Carey is left back. <laughs> Pavarotti, you're right, was in the news recently for having left his wife after uh, 35 years, uh, who's said to be crushed. <laughs> uh, as a young man, the Pope uh, played in goal where, after a particularly bad spell, he would sort out his defence with a special hand signal. You go up into midfield, you drop back, and you two stay wide on the wing. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, uh, Ian. The nominations are Martin Bashir, David Vine, Eric Morley, and Michael Heseltine. Oh. Martin Bashir just won a BAFTA um, for um, comedy. Comedy best talk show for Panorama yes. for his conversation with Princess Di. Um, and he's the only one who won a BAFTA. That's pathetic. That's that worse than my answer. Oh, all right, it's about rugby then. Martin Bashir used to present rugby programmes, which is why he was chosen to interview Princess Diana. <laughs> It's true. It's not just mindless smut. <laughs> it's Martin Bashir, because he's not wearing anything around his neck. The others have got ties or a bow tie. We normally make it slightly more difficult than that. <laughs> they all hang around mad blonde women. Hesseltine was in Maggie's cabinet for years. <laughs> what about David Vine? Bashir interviewed one. No, 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 you do know nothing about David Vine. Um... No, I we, don't. We do, we just don't have to say it. Mm -hmm. To do One. with blondes, is it to do with Stephen Hendry? Oh, that'll be edited out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we... Why? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're we intrigued now. In? Is it to do, they've all had a relationship with a blonde, yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so, Princess Di. Yeah, but what about the Stephen Hendry bit? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> she won't be drawn. Um, uh, well, no, I think I may have to give you this one. Uh, the answer is that they've all interviewed Miss World, uh, apart from Panorama's uh, Martin Bashir, uh, who, being a serious journalist, would never stoop to interviewing some blonde airhead about wanting to travel and work for charity. <laughs> uh, in 1963, Michael Heseltine uh, interviewed Miss World in his former life as an ITV presenter. And unfortunately for him, footage still survives. Oh, wow. When you actually were walking <laughs> in front of the judges, uh, you were, uh, first of all, you had an unusual swimsuit on, but did you have any other sort of tactics? No. <laughs> uh, the uh, Miss World contest is still being produced in South Africa, although Eric Morley, the show's original creator, has fallen out with the new regime, because according to a spokesman, uh, Mr Morley felt himself too much behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, 
think we understand what they meant. Uh, and so, uh, before our panellists go off to uh, change into evening wear, the uh, scores so far, uh, in reverse order, are that uh, Eddie and Janet are current runners-up with six, whilst uh, Ian and Dermot are as good as crowned with eight. Well, time now for a round which anagram fanatics have come to know and love as the missing sword round. Uh, the usual tapestry of uh, newspaper headlines interwoven with none or more from this week's guest publication, the indispensable fish-keeping answers. <laughs> so, away we go with... Many beaches are what, says Guide. Many beaches are poo, says Guide. <laughs> Blue ice. <laughs> Near the sea. <laughs> Many beaches are cesspits, uh, says Guy. Yeah. Next, how to keep what warm? Spawn. <laughs> Frog spawn. Uh, yes, I realised that was what you were talking about. <laughs> um, Young fish. Young fish, new, no. A goldfish is, in fact, uh, the answer we weren't going to get. To heat the water is apparently the inspired suggestion. <laughs> according to this month's fish-keeping answers. Uh, next, uh, Charles pushed into what? Charles pushed into pie. It's obviously. <laughs> well, sadly, it's marriage, isn't it? Is the right answer. Uh, next, Selena Scott's what upheld? Brain cell. Case. <laughs> so not just Julia Carling, then. <laughs> Complaint. It's Selena Scott's claim upheld. No, I was pretty close. Claim? Do you say claim? Yeah. OK, you can have the point. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, I'm going to ask you that question again. <laughs> did you say claim? Yeah. Yeah, he did. I heard Well, this you. is worse than the Scott inquiry. <laughs> Man. I heard him. Man lies blatantly and let off. <laughs> Next, fetishists whip up what? A souffle. <laughs> whip up buttocks. <laughs> The Six Freedom Drive is, in fact, uh, the right answer. You couldn't guess that oh, in a million I'm oh, sorry, at the beginning of this, I, this is the first time I've ever been on this programme. I don't want to be pedantic, but I'm going to be pedantic. You said, mm. fill in the missing word, and there yep. were three. This is actually known as the missing words round. Yeah, but if you have one blank, we think one blank, and then you yep. put three in, yeah. and that is just... Absolutely like correct. The Nazis would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's that beige suit. It's, you uh, have an interesting view of that period of history. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about modern Nazis. Oh, sorry. It's, yes. uh, they've got less together now. And they run game shows, do they? <laughs> oh, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, all I want to do is what? Is gob on you. <laughs> Um, did Diana, all I want to do is help people. Oh, yeah, all I want she wanted to do was help the charity and to all raise I want the to profile. Do is touch people's hearts. Touch the, raise Literally. the profile of the charity. <laughs> Understand was it, was it Diana? Can you, can you give us that one? Uh, I can tell you that it wasn't because the right answer is actually all I want to do is keep marine fish. <laughs> Which uh, consummate display of inadequacy oh. brings tonight's contest not before time to an end, and the final reckoning shows that this week's uh, blackheads are Ian and Dermot with eight, whilst uh, this week's big heads are Eddie and Janet with ten. <laughs> uh, so, an orange ice lolly to our winners, a uh, blue ice lolly <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> Which, uh, plausible note, uh, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Dermot Morgan, Eddie Izzard and Janet Street Porter, and I leave you with excellent news for the Guildford Women's Institute as God agrees to open the jumble sale. <laughs> there are suspicions that an imposter may have sneaked into this year's annual general meeting of the Invisible Society. And in South Africa, the makers of the Wonder Bra say their latest advertising campaign has been more effective than even they had hoped. <laughs> Good night. A cheeky appreciation of sport is on the cards for BBC One at 5 to 12 with Nick Hancock, and I think it's all over. Thank <laughs> you.